tool balancing affects both the tool holder performance and the cutting tool performance, as well as machine tool life. With the machine tool, you've got a spindle that's putting in a lot of work that's running really well uh, concentrically. You want that tool holder to be right there with it, not trying to fight it every time it, it spins around. So keeping that balance low keeps the forces on the spindle bearings lighter and will extend that, that life of that spindle. Uh, same can go for cutting tools. As its as imbalance increases, uh, run out increases with it and can cause shorter tool life out around conditions, uh, bad part geometry, uh, and all kinds of issues. Tool holder imbalance is, is just a measurement of how much mass is spinning off axis on a tool holder in a spindle. Uh, what it does is as that that mass rotates at higher and higher speeds, it generates more and more radial forces. So as we get a really high imbalance on a tool holder, it'll start to pull it to the side, creating an oversized hole, maybe deflecting the tool to a new location, causing uh, geometry problems or locational issues. So it's, it's physically trying to move the tool off center line. So we know from really long experience studying and, and looking at this problem what unbalance can do. In, in situations like this with boring tools, the most common thing is for the, the bore to become out of round. So instead of just a full round bore, it turns into more of an egg shape. And that's just because that, that force is pushing the, the tool towards the center in some orientations and pulling it away from the center in others. So when you're trying to make a nice, round, straight, true bore for a, a very specific product, you have to make sure that the boring tool is well balanced or you'll never make a round tool. Same can be said with, uh, with the uh, tool holders themselves. Uh, when you're at low speeds and general purpose machining, it's not so critical. Uh, but when we deal with things like our micro tools where we can get down to drills as small as two thou, you don't want that tool to be moving around or being uh, pushed around by the spindle and the, the imbalance of the tool holder. You want it to be running really as true to center as you possibly can. So that's another place where balance will really affect the outcome of the, of the application. There is now a uh, tool holder specific ISO standard. Um, it covers balancing of tool holders within the world of machine tool spindles. So it takes a lot more data into the calculation, uh, starting with the type and size of spindle, whether it's a 50 taper, steep taper, CAT 50, or an HSK 100, or a CAPTO C3, or any taper size. It, it takes that connection type into consideration, bearing sizes, bearing spacings, all that kind of stuff in the background that, that really makes a complete spindle assembly. And then it tries to relate the balance of the tool holder itself within that, that ecosystem. Um, now, they, they started out by uh, also defining roughing versus finishing, uh, with the knowledge that when you're using a roughing tool, imbalance forces are much lower than the roughing forces of the cutting tool. So it doesn't necessarily need to be as well balanced. They also have a fine balance parameter in there that says that you know, for fine uh, milling applications, light loads, you need to take it to a slightly higher value. The, the most interesting part about it though is that it's got a floor to both the roughing and finishing uh, on balance. So with the older system, it was just a linear line straight down to zero as the speeds get faster. With the new system, it drops down to a specific gram millimeter and says, if you balance this holder any better than that, based on it being in this type of, of machine tool spindle, you're not gonna improve anything. So it puts it into a realistic, manageable range of unbalanced correction, but makes sure that it's as good as it's going to possibly be without overkill. From Big Die Showa, we recognized the importance of tool holder balance a long time ago. Uh, about 35 years ago, we came out with the Mega uh, Chuck platform. This was our, our first attempt to control tool holder balance in production, going all the way back that far. Uh, the Mega Chuck program from us uh, means that after heat treatment, we are finishing all of the external surfaces as much as the internal as we can to make it as true and concentric and round as possible. Uh, we take that even a step further with ground threads on both the holder and the nuts 
and pre-balanced nuts to go along with that that had the, the notches taken off the outside so it's a fully concentric nut. So even going back 35, 40 years, we were looking at, at making tool holders that were coming out of the box ready to run at high speeds. So the kinds of things you're looking for in a tool holder when you, when you want to evaluate it for, for uh, balance conditions it, are some of those things. Is the, uh, are the drive keys and the body finished after heat treat? Or is it a kind of just in a rough condition, sandblasted, black oxided? Is it, is it turned threads with a really tight, nice fit on the matching threads of the nuts? Have the nuts been pre-balanced? Um, you can balance a tool holder body by itself pretty easily, but by the time you add the collet and the nut and the cutting tool into it, all of those pieces have to be relatively well balanced for you to get a complete assembly that's ready to go. The most important thing about uh, balance and trying to measure exact numbers is to always do it in a fully completed state. That means retention knob in the tool holder, all the inserts in every pocket ready to go. Uh, it really gives you a better um, understanding of where things sit in the machine. You can do some hard balancing of individual components, but until you get it all together, you won't know where you really sit.